Alright, so today we're going to have a go at another design. Uh, this is also a very organic design, um, and uh, both in the roofs and in the floor plan. And what I'd like to start with is uh, first in getting some uh, 2D shapes going. So um, I'm going to show a few tricks in Illustrator. So one way that you can get curves in Illustrator is, of course, by using the pen tool. Uh, and it takes a bit of getting used to, but the combination of, of uh, the pen tool and the um, uh, the curvature tool, which is this one, uh, is generally really good for making uh, these kind of blobby forms. Uh, there is another approach which uh, I thought I'd describe today because uh, it's not as well known, uh, and that's using uh, scripts that uh, create meta balls. So I'll put a couple of circles. Um, let's try this. And uh, the place to download these scripts from is uh, shspage.com. Uh, the one we're interested in is uh, this one. Um, and what this does is if you load a uh, set of circles, go file, um, scripts, other script, uh, the zip file will uh, come up with these uh, JavaScript files. I like to save them onto my H drive so that um, you can grab them later. Uh, hold that one, and then when you hit preview, you'll see them connected. Um, so if I hit OK there, uh, I can then use the Pathfinder to join them all into one shape and to get rid of this shape on the inside, we could go to Compound Path and Release. And what that does is it takes a, um, uh, a shape that has uh, other shapes inside it and uh, separates them out. So I think this somehow uh, would make a smoother curve than what I'm capable of doing anyway with the curvature tool. Um, well, some could would prefer just drawing it manually like that. So, um, what can we do with this? We could try all sorts of other. I mean, if we're still at the stage of experimenting, uh, one thing you could try in Illustrator is uh, things like uh, blending. So, uh, set the blend options to how many steps? Let's say we need the twelve. Um, go to make. Uh, this could uh, lead to an interesting pattern. Um, let's go object expand. Object ungroup. This way we can give them a thin line. Then maybe just the these two uh, this one. Uh, we could use the line tool. We could um, make some revolutions. Um, let's uh, let's go three degrees. We can, by hitting Control D, just keep repeating what uh, we and that can give lines going the other direction. Um, and all of this can give us, if we go back to here, all of that can give us kind of a nice grid to work with. Um, which you could import into uh, uh, into something like SketchUp to manipulate. Um, one way that you can also uh, subtract out the these outlines. I mean, in SketchUp it's quite easy because we'd get um, uh, merged together, um, and that would still have a nice effect. You wanted to do the same in Illustrator. All right, so what we'll do is we'll first make a copy of this. Um, and I'll bring layer. Just 
can't delete that. Mm -hmm. All of these lines will expand them. And we should we'll take this go object uh, path divide the objects below and with these paths we should be able to go along the edges and delete that there um, combine that with um, that blend we were doing before um, which I think I deleted so we'll just do that again quickly um, I'll make a circle here <coughs> we'll make a circle line uh, select this line here uh, object path uh, object blend uh, we'll take this and So this brand again expand out and do the body fill and a very light stuff. So that gives us a grid which we can play with and this group should be able to uh, export out into uh, like as a DWG into SketchUp. Um, now, the other approach that you could use is, uh, depending on what you're trying to make, is uh, using me uh, mesh smoothing methods. And I'll bring that shape we made in um, as a guideline. Um, it might not be that uh, drawing in 2D was uh, uh, doing quite work out, so I'll just take a outline um, and detach that here for a second. Um, and we'll detach this with uh, this shape here. Alright, so the technique I wanted to show here was that in Max, when you start out with a uh, simple plane, uh, it's always uh, useful to have edged faces on, um, and usually by default, you your plane will come as a shape like this with uh, multiple quadrants. For this exercise, we're I'm just going to move that into one, and I'll also um, uh, to, uh, in order to demonstrate uh, that if we select an edge, we can uh, extend it out. And all I'm doing is holding down shift, uh, and this allows us to um, move the points. If I don't hold shift, it'll just drag it. If I hold shift, it'll bring another line. Uh, if I select a vertex here, it moves individual points. If I select faces, face gets moved. And if I select lines, uh, line moves. Um, so that is, that's the basics of uh, what's called box or edit poly modeling. Uh, because I started, however, with circles, uh, a more natural uh, type of uh, topology could it you could probably create with cylinders a bit easier so we need a uh, 
2D shape. So I'll start, I'll make a cylinder here and I'll switch on a poly and then uh, delete uh, the base of it. Uh, because all I want was this shape here. I don't want to go to trouble of modeling it uh, myself. So I'll make some copies of this. And use the scale tool to bring these down. we have these shapes uh, there's a really useful tool called bridge over here in the side so if I select edges uh, I'll select this oops this group of edges and one two three four and one two three four and if I hit bridge um, it tries to join them but it also lets me put in more segments if I need, which I uh, will. Um, and I'll just make an adjustment here uh, by moving this edge uh, over here. Now the, um, the aim of uh, doing uh, box modeling is that we model things roughly, and at the end of it we use a smooth modifier, so if I I'll smooth it on afterwards, I get a much uh, kind of nicer effect, but I can work in a rough way, so we'll just try to get this as close to uh, as close to to what we want to achieve. And you can see later on it'll be smoothed out. So again, let's try it with the rest of them. One, two, three, four. Bridge. Oh, I could have also uh, changed uh, the. I think it's called the bias smooth. Uh, maybe that only works when you're in uh, 3D. So I'll leave it at that. I can just do it manually like I did before. Can these are just one. And then let's try these last two edges. Maybe I'll just do three this time. Three and and should I think what would happen? Yeah, I selected everything by using a portion which is called element. And I'm going to rotate this so that it aligns better. Right. So if I now one, two, three, try bridging again. Right. Let's now try. This is where it's um, starting to look a bit messy because these don't line up very well. So I might try. Over here, or we might try bridging these two things individually. So what I'll do is I'll move this here, um, and these ones I'll weld instead of bridging. Um, and let's see if I can bridge these. Probably not because they are connected, which means let me go backwards instead of welding. Let's try uh, just being consistent and bridging again. Right. Uh, and again, let's make an little adjustment here.
that and try some more hydrogen. That's good. And let's try from here to hmm, actually let's try first from here to here. That would done nicely, and let's go from here to here. Now, what we don't want to happen is these uh, kind of faces that don't line up with anything, uh, and we'll see why a bit later on. Uh, so, over here we have a problem because the same thing uh, has happened, and I think one thing we could do is um, uh, maybe divide this up further. Uh, let's try first merging these two things together to see if we can fix it. And maybe that will do for now. Uh, Also try putting another cut here so that we don't have this irregular shape. So if I drop down to um, cut and cut from here to here, Let's see if that kind of solves our little dilemma. So let's try putting on this for this move and and that looks pretty good for a. Uh, something done so roughly. So um, now that we have the reason for uh, experimenting with uh, this type of square modeling as opposed to uh, just doing something automatic like um, uh, like for example uh, 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 just taking this edge and making it into a surface via um, Edit poly is that uh, when you have no control over the edging, uh, it, it's hard to do operations over it. So uh, we could try something like um, subdivide. Uh, it's a little bit hard. Just let me make the color of that darker. Uh, and you do get uh, you know, weird things happening. It's not. I mean, it's not the worst thing, but I think here we have way more. Um, way more op opportunities. So, for example, if I um, just make a couple of copies of this, uh, we could try uh, Dropping down to the generate topology tool. Uh, this only works if um, the poly is on. So uh, maybe I'll drop down the number of operations to begin with. And then um, here I'll switch the topology type to uh, edge direction. And maybe that would also look uh, better if that was done with. More that uh, uh, is done with more divisions. So uh, there's a different one using the brick pattern. Uh, let's try what we originally planned with the edge direction one. Uh, um, so we'll just select the edge poly first. Um, and that gets you an interesting uh, radial pattern to work with. Uh, let's try two more. Uh, we'll go with um, again, edit poly has to be selected. Let's go with 
But then this comes, this gives an interesting insight. I mean, this could easily be the floor, uh, I think, of uh, the system. Very interesting tessellation happening there. Um, uh, I mean, compared to these, this probably isn't really worth uh, holding on to. So I'll delete that and we'll try one uh, different one. But here, let's try. Um, I wonder what would happen if we tried the hexagon one. If this is a real hit or miss type one because it really requires um, uh, a very regular geometry to work. So, yeah, no luck with that one. But we could try smooth style. There's an interesting, again, uh, tiling pattern. And here, let's try um, edit. Uh, let's try. Cross pattern. All right, so we have four different examples, uh, six different examples. I'll delete these to begin with. And then I'm going to attach all of these together. Select all the lines and go create shape. Uh, do speaking linear lines. And let's see if exporting this will work. Which override is that? Maybe we need a bigger upboard. Um, right. And now that we have that, we can uh, just select this from here. It's not quite, uh, quite exact. It might require some uh, manipulation. Or if you're feeling um, too lazy to do that, you could um, uh, draw this um, and then use the shape builder tool.
Okay, so maybe this one can be made with tin. Let me try this with not five and then all right. So we have six interesting patterns to uh, choose from, and uh, I'll go with just the um, backwards. Uh, I'll go with just the one that we had picked initially. Detach it and I'll just delete this because they were just there for my experimenting. Okay, so inside the original design, we've got a kind of wavy uh, thing happening on the roof. Uh, what we'll do is um, there's a, there is a modifier called um, noise. And so one way you can make it kind of warped a bit is by applying uh, kind of a noise modifier. So this would essentially make things uh, random. And uh, that is one way to go about it. Uh, an alternate approach could be uh, you use a uh, freeform deformation box where we control uh, which uh, points you want changed. And so this gives you more control. Uh, uh, option three could be you switch on the edit for the modifier, select points, like for example, the center points, uh, and then we uh, go soft selection. And you could uh, uh, move those uh, in a particular way, um, and that could give an interesting uh, effect as well, um, and probably a more controlled one. Uh, one thing I like about the noise is that uh, you can, uh, by changing the uh, uh, seed, for example, you can very rapidly create a lot of different variations. If we were to um, you know, make uh, several copies of this as uh, can be seen in the uh, viewport the view over there. So let's uh, let's go with the noise one for now. And I'll just delete these two other approaches. All right. So um, let's make a copy of this. And right now. Uh, the color indicates that it's um, uh, facing away from me. Let's, let's try flipping flipping these images. Oh no, so it was actually the right way. Um, We'll make a copy of this. Let me just uh, get rid of the color of light. Yeah, all right. So we can see this and the underside. All right, so now we're going to try to create this bridging uh, structure to support the design. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this. I'm going to check out the noise. So this one's flat and this one's the uh, ceiling. And I'm going to scale this just a bit bigger. And then in this part, uh, to make a kind of uh, base form, I'm just going to select these, um, uh, these star-like shapes. and maybe bevel 
float now I want to make shape the join point here to here so what we'll do is we'll select uh, this other part but um, uh, one thing to do a bridge that's needed is for those uh, shapes to be facing uh, towards each other so one thing I'll have to do is take this and then click on flip and you'll see that uh, because it's not facing us it's kind of a dark color so if I now uh, select this face and uh, I try to get its equivalent shape, I think that should be this one up here. Uh, rather than go directly to the center, I'll go for the um, I'll go for this these three triangles. Let's just see if this there for every single uh, one of these above it. Hmm. Uh, it looks like it looks like every single one should have three shapes onto it. So I'll have a go with these three. Was I believe this one? So when we hit the bridge tool, what it does is it creates a um, it creates this joining shape between the two things. And sometimes we have to uh, twist it until it uh, becomes right because you're dealing with two irregular shapes. Uh, we can add segments. Add two, uh, maybe three, and then let's take a look at is that coming out all right? There's also a taper feature, which I think looks quite nice. All right, so if that, if we're happy with that, um, and it doesn't look like there's any weird twisting happening, we'll keep going with this pattern. So we'll hit this plus, uh, and then I'll select this. And those three, the lift up all plus three plus. Oh, actually, uh, before I was thinking it's nice to go for every second one because that gives a kind of seeding. Uh, on the inside, so one, two, three, one, two, three. Seems fine. Let's keep going. One, two, three, and two, three. And this one. Right at all. I think it's because I had uh, two faces selected. So let's try that again. One here, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's try that again. Bridge.
you have to be uh, very patient when doing uh, this kind of work because of being on the repetition. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I think just two more to go. So we'll go with. So, uh, one thing I was thinking was that it would be nice to move these points down, and these ones up, uh, and uh, the aim of modeling things this way is that uh, at the very end of this we're going to go uh, turbo smooth, so that you get a um, much smoother uh, effect on the uh, on the shape. Uh, let's see if I, maybe I'm moving moving those points might have actually uh, messed things up. Let's try it. Table smoothing with them still on. All right, actually, I think that looks better. Yeah. So and we've got a nice little seating. Uh, structure over there. Alright, but uh, one nice thing about that bridge effect is that you can keep applying it because the output of it is, is a mesh. So one thing we can do is, uh, imagine we wanted to make this more tree-like. We could, um, uh, it might help if we had more surfaces to work with. So I'll, I'll use the um, slicing plane. We can move it here. Uh, I'll move this up here. Go slice and again slice. And the reason I was doing that was that imagine on these faces we uh, actually start. Um, bridging between uh, here and here. So plus let's go from here to here and from here to here. This might require some untwisting. There we go. Right there. Okay, that's that looks right. Uh, let's try from here to here. Make a mess from here to. There we go. And yeah, we could keep going with that, but I'll um, uh, I'll uh, finish it there, and then I'll just add the. Uh, smooth modifier and that gives us a pretty nice effect. Uh, we'll also export out just this edge here because uh, in uh, future programs it might be if we it might be worthwhile to if I go create shape uh, uh, this might actually come in useful for doing things like balconies. Uh, sorry, not balconies, uh, balustrades. Uh, yeah, I can, you can see a balustrade there. Yeah. There's something like that around it. Uh, yeah. So, 
to export this to SketchUp, one way you can do it is to export um, export all of these as uh, STL. Uh, I was trying it earlier with uh, some of the other shapes, and I got this uh, into SketchUp over here um, using the same uh, kind of effect, uh, and then you know, using that to put in people. Uh, I suppose the last thing I'll cover is how um, I made this ladder structure. So what we'll do is back here, um, I'll make a copy of this. I will take out that um, this part here and. Um, might have accidentally collapsed a lot of the uh, initial shapes. I should have made more copies. Uh, so what I'll do though is uh, just manually delete uh, delete these parts. many copies of uh, uh, objects before you go through uh, the irreversible process. So let's hide this for a second. Probably don't need all the, the center parts of this anyway, so we can uh, delete. Actually, I'll just have another input on top of that. So we'll just delete everything from to here. can switch the selection type to that of a circle, which makes it easy to select this type of shape. So now if we take this, go set in by polygon, we can get these, Oops. and then uh, we'll just delete them. Now if we look at that in 3D, when we have these edges, uh, we can apply a shell modifier. This can give us some thickness, and it's probably a good kind of structural system for the roof. And that's basically how uh, this roof here was made. Um, uh, and so the last part, uh, I think I did, and I'll open up the older file I made just before I started recording. Um, actually, save this as. Um, uh, I just wanted to add that the using the symmetry tool, you can make all sorts of interesting um, uh, kind of mirroring the same effect. 
uh, by compounding you know, several of those together. Okay, uh, and yeah, with some clever modeling, you can you know, take away some of the repetition when you're doing um, these kind of organic fits. I'll move that over there. Just define something like that. Table smooth end. We get our beautiful end cap. Here we've got something funny happening. Although that is an interesting artifact. You know, what would happen if we move that just a <coughs> tad? We could get the trees forming uh, kind of arches like Gothic church. And we get an interesting fan as well out of that. So, all right, I think that's kind of enough for a lot to take in. Uh, the main thing I wanted to just highlight is. Um, experimenting like uh, this could easily become like the floor tile system or the ceiling uh, could have a kind of drip lighting that uh, looked like uh, these shapes here uh, and so until you really start modeling I mean there's just no way I would have sketched something like this uh, to begin with but uh, through the modeling process a lot of things got revealed so uh, thank you for watching that and yeah, I know it was a bit tedious uh, and I'll see uh, everybody in studio.